Welcome to the Financial Planners Southeast Asia Podcast, a show dedicated to driving the positive evolution of financial advice, specifically within Southeast Asia. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. Welcome to another episode of the Financial Advisor Southeast Asian Podcast. When here and today, we have a financial advisor from the Philippines with a passion for the mission. This is Adele Toledo. Hello, Adele. Great to have you on. Hi, Gwen. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> you're welcome. I'm I'm so glad that you're here right now. So uh, just a backstory, you guys. Adele and I have known each other for quite some time now. Um, we are part of the same group that um, maybe we'll get to talk about this later in in our course of the conversation. But actually, right. Right now, it's very interesting because Adele has just told me about her origin story of why she um, started or how she started her financial advice um, career. So, Del, this is my first question for you: Like, how did you start, and why did you start um, becoming a financial advisor? Well. Uh, thank you, Gwen. Maybe I will start with why. Why yeah, it did? Yeah. Yes, it's sort of uh, you know, as Filipinos, we have this. Oh, I'm so shy to refuse of this particular friend. Mm. She kept on inviting me, and mm. she wants me to be part of the group. But actually, I don't really have the thing for insurance mm -hmm. selling. But I, I said at the back of my mind, okay, I will just give in to her. And then maybe mm -hmm. after six months, I will just uh, disappear or find reasons why I will <laughs> I would stop in this business. So yeah. that's how my journey started in this insurance uh, company. All right. And like, how did that progress? Why did you stay like three years later? Why are you still in the industry? Well, maybe uh, as of now, uh, the first two things that came to my mind, because this is an impromptu question, maybe, <laughs> maybe one of the reason is, first, is I found family in my, in my group. Mm. Uh, I think the relationship is very important. Mm. Anywhere, you, anywhere you work, Anywhere you go, relationship is very important. You stay in the family because there, there's relationship that exists. Same with my journey in AXA mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. my group, I really regard them as my friends mm -hmm. and we have these good times together. So mm -hmm. I did not notice that the time passed by and, oh, I stayed here for one year already. Mm -hmm. So... I think the first one is the relationship that I mm. establish with my co-workers. Co -workers. And the next yeah. one is the later part of the journey, I capture the vision, which should mm. be because in some some of the financial advisor, they really join the business or the company because they already capture the vision. They want to do something like this. They mm. want to help people on my on my personal journey, the vision, the catching of vision was a little bit late because I realized, mm. oh, this one is a noble, is a noble profession. Because mm. by profession, I'm a nurse, Gwen. So yeah. I really love to help people. But this is mm. on the other side of the fence as a nurse. I realized, oh, I, I can also help people through their finances, not mm. only when they're sick, but the, yeah. I can also help them not only physical sickness, but I can also help them with their financial illnesses if we have that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I I agree. And that's such like a three sixty turn for your career from being a nurse to being a financial advisor. But still 
like the advocacy still uh, remains the same to help people um, and to you know help them get better get well um, so before it was their body and now it's their finances so <laughs> to me that was a very interesting story now that you started um, because you couldn't say no to to your friends and now um, a few years later you're part of the financial advisor group who's very um, passionate about teaching people and uh, making sure that they're uh, doing or they're utilizing the best ways for their money. Now, um, it's very interesting that you mentioned that part of the reason why you stayed is because you love working with your co-workers and i can definitely agree with that i think the your workplace or the like your work environment is such a big part in your happiness in, in your in in the career that you've chosen so can you tell me more about like your the things that are your group is doing right in terms of um, fostering a positive uh, mindset or a positive environment for work um yes uh what we what what we do oh no before the pandemic we have this usual mon we call that mon monday impact where mm -hmm. we gather together all the units and then we learn something and after mm -hmm. that because uh you you know me already because uh, we're 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 on the same group in toastmasters mm -hmm. club yes so yes. i'm my personality is a little bit sunny like i'm the sunshine mm -hmm. of the group so mm -hmm. when we gather together I, sometimes i would be the host i would be i would i would be the responsible i would be the person who's responsible for the icebreaker mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that and before if i may add i'm i was also teaching six years ago in a college in a in a college university back in mm -hmm. Mindanao. So mm -hmm. I really love to talk to people. So mm -hmm. when we gather together, there's a training or product training. And after that, we have this icebreaker activity. So most of the time, I'm the one responsible for that. And then mm -hmm. I find by doing that, I find, I, I, I find the meaning of existence in a not I realize oh being here is not only earning money being mm -hmm. here is also building relationship because mm -hmm. there are a lot of financial advisors who are so stressed when they come <laughs> in the office their faces yeah. are not so when we we call that as Filipinos are their faces are not arranged it's like a better <laughs> room so yeah. uh, me as a bubbly person I would really go to their seat and talk to them oh how's your week how's your week mm. and so I realized oh I'm being placed here because I would be the sunshine of their mm. of their dark moments and then <laughs> Maybe I realize that after work, because I love to go out, mm -hmm. one additional, in addition to our activity, we also go to a coffee shop or restaurant. Mm -hmm. We eat together, and most importantly, maybe the thing that really, st really stayed me, that really put me in this job, is mm -hmm. when we when we meet clients right we will mm. meet them in a coffee shop or like that mm. so that's my thing mm. so i really love it like so communication and connection with other people you live for that and i can definitely agree because you as you mentioned you like talking um and you like conversing with people but it's actually different like i don't know if you agree but it's different if you converse with people in a regular manner like in an informal way and it's also different if you're conversing with them for like a prospective client or um, someone that you're trying to um, teach and inform about financial education and provide financial advice, right? Yes, agree. Because when it's the normal conversation, it's like give and take. But here, mm. I think the most important thing that really 
that really established me in this job. If I may add, you know, the job, I, I have, you know, I have lots of jobs. Like yes. I've been a hospital agent, like we're mm-hmm. selling hospital supplies and then mm-hmm. we're talking to doctors, purchasers for 12 years. So mm-hmm. I developed not only here, we're not here to exist as financial advisor to educate people, but I think the most important thing also, which is equivalent to educating them is your listening listening ears you need to mm. you need to listen because when you don't know how to listen the people the people will disappear because sometimes they're 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 being being put or placed in a in a manner where they should be heard so when you mm. will not be listening when you're not hearing their sentiments or their problems you will not know how to respond what products to offer because mm. you're not listening so i think listening skills is very important in this business mm. in order for you to survive so for the 12 years as hospital agent maybe this made me a better financial advisor because I already capture that I should listen in any way to my clients. Mm. Right. And yes, I definitely agree. It's it's one thing to talk, but it's another to actually um, lend an ear to your client and really find out what's um what their needs are right and then base your recommendations through what you've learned from them but i'm sh- so you've been a, a hospital agent for 12 years so that's ample um experience in the like the sales field did you have any struggles when you were starting out as a financial advisor though because it's one thing to sell um, equipment that hospitals really need like they know they need it and so they buy it so I, I feel like it's um, it's something that's not very I know there are challenges but it's is it it was it difficult for you to start your career as a financial advisor even though you've had ample experience with um, as a hospital agent yeah, I agree with you. It's a different thing. And when you're selling hospital products like 3M, uh, mm. I'm sorry, I'm mentioning products here. <laughs> that's well, okay. that's, uh, that's my, that's my like sponges, gauze mm. and raw, mm-hmm. uh, bandage roll, anything like that. It's a supplies. Yeah. It's an every, every, everyday thing that the hospital should really purchase from us. But here yeah. in insurance company, it's really hard selling. So mm. when I started, you know, um, an idea before I, my first job was in Manila and I mm-hmm. was raised in Mindanao. So I, mm-hmm. I spoke very well in Bisaya, like vernacular <laughs> language. So when yes. I get there, I really have a hard time speaking in Tagalog. So mm-hmm. I was like the underdog. So that mm-hmm. gives me an inspiration that I want to tell the whole, whole world that there's no limitation, that mm-hmm. this tongue of mine will, even if I'm from Mindanao, I will really excel. So mm-hmm. during that, those times, I really work hard and I was on top of my group. So I'm mm. like top one, top two, because I don't like to be taken as, you know, I'm from the province like that. So it's mm. really an, the inferiority complex of me that mm. pushed me to shine. So mm. for the 12 years, I developed this uh, maybe subconscious egotistical uh, character that, oh, mm. I'm really good in selling and all that. <laughs> so yeah. when I started in in this business, mm. I realized that I was being seen mode. Have you have you experienced <laughs> that? You yeah. you you've you've <laughs> tried to um, write a very nice and a professional statement and mm. sentences telling them that you're in this company, you want to help them in their financial uh, yeah. difficulties and like that, or you want to, fi- you're an, a financial educator now like mm. that, and they're just seeing the messages. And then I realized I never pack up, though I, I realized that, oh, even in your friends list, mm. 
you realize that they're not friends at all <laughs> because they're not answering. So my sentiment was, oh, why they're not answering? Why is it, why on why scene mode? Why not answer? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy right now, but they're not answering me at all. But yeah. that gave me that experience made me pushed me to go on. I realized if I will stop mm -hmm. now, that mm -hmm. will give them that will validate their uh yeah. what do you call their doubts, assumption assumption yes, that yes. i will not yeah. stay this long in this business so mm. i said i should stay here longer than my because i said i will stay six months but i uh, said yeah. oh no i will not stop six months i will show <laughs> to these people who seen mode me or ghost me that i will exist here that i'm on the right path though at yeah. the time my motive was wrong but thank yes. God, <laughs> I, I survived for that six months, one year. And now it's three years because I realized, okay, uh, being seen mode is part of the journey. It's not, a, it's normal. There's nothing to mm. be scared of. But honestly, it's a different thing when you're working in the hospital, when you're not promoting your products, but you're mm -hmm. just asking the doctors or the purchasers if they will order. But here you have, you are really pushing the product. You are educating mm -hmm. people because in our country, insurance company is not really, it's not that, uh, how will we say it? Like the people are not so open in yes, with yes. the insurance thing so yes they still they, have doubts they have um, doubts and they have traumas the pro, you know. yes pro traumas <laughs> with regards to uh, previous or um past ex negative experiences with like other products that were masked as yes, insurance as, yes, yes mask as insurance yeah so um and so you started in the business um uh, thinking that you'll just stay for six months yes you extended a bit you told yourself that you're going to ex extend just at least to one prove year. a point yes at least one year for the <laughs> in mode thing so when they yeah. in mode me okay i i will stay six months because of my friend who invited me and then yes. one year because i want to prove to the uh, <laughs> friends who seen mode me that I will pass the six months period. Yes, but eventually you stayed because you realized that this is a noble profession and that there is actually opportunity for you to um, help people. So that is a, is a very interesting journey. And I'm glad you shared that, Adele, because I know that uh, there will be financial advisors who are going to listen to this podcast who first might be um, in the industry because they were coerced <laughs> to joining. Um, and then maybe some of them also feels that, you know, the the it's not more on sadness or maybe it is like the sadness of being seen zoned yes. <laughs> and, yes. um, and it's it's a good way for us to um, give them hope that you know you can actually stay and it's it's a normal thing in this industry that not all people are going to believe you right away but that you are also you also need to build um, your credibility exactly to to other people and one of building credibility is to stick to that industry um because you believe in the nobility of your uh, of the thing that you're doing and yes. not just because but it's very hard like i that was one of the reasons um partly just to be honest one of the partly one of the reasons why i i stopped um as a financial advisor because Christian and I were starting out together <laughs> and then we did it full, full time and we realized after a year that I don't know that wasn't really a year like eight months that hey I think this can't sustain us yet as a family so um, one of us had to work and um, I said that okay that's fine I'm going to work because he's actually uh, better at you know, convincing people and reaching out to people. I'm not very good. That's like not one of my strengths. So I realized I, I just have to go back to work and then um, 
as actually as I was, you know, trying to figure out how I can um, still be in the industry without selling, I realized that I can do this. Like I can, I can do podcasts. I can um, educate other people through social media. So now it has been like a really great journey for me. But speaking of journey, Dell. So three years later, you're still in this in this. Um, industry and you're thriving in the industry how are you able to grow your client base when what because you started out like people wouldn't hear you out mm. yes my friends here in Cebu will just sin mood me yeah. but I have this uh, you are right when you said that credibility is very important so mm -hmm. my first clients were my family they're really mm. They're the people who really believed in me because they know me already that I'm not into this uh, monkey business. That's what they call it. Like, <laughs> so when I offer something, they will really, if they have the need or the money to buy it, they will really buy it from me because they know already that what I'm, what I'm telling them is really true. So credibility is very important. So my first clients were my family and friends mm. back in mm. back in the province like mm. high school classmates the fr mm. the old friends so it's very hard for me to gather a specific uh, clients here in Cebu because mm. I my I don't have relatives here mm -hmm. and my friends here are also friends of people who are also selling <laughs> selling insurances so mm -hmm. how can mm -hmm. i sell so mm -hmm. i said it's okay so i will be i will be focusing more which is very important also you focus on your strength for for mm -hmm. the meantime i focus on my family and friends those mm -hmm. people who really believe in me and then i just i'm not kidding i know there there will there would be people who will be hearing this one and this very day i just <laughs> Uh, came out from a uh, a sale. I mm. uh, yes, um, and a friend who also I don't know if she's part of the group who seen mode me. But <laughs> this this client of mine just today, she signed uh. up for a health fund or health mm. policy. We're mm. not really close. We're not. Mm. We're just acquaintance friend. And mm. then I I offer the product to her sister and then mm. she was just at the at the side listening mm. but she mm. was a she's my schoolmate back in law school you say mm. i have you see i have lots of things <laughs> doing in my life i also yeah. you know i'm a nurse i also went to law school and everything so he was my schoolmate he was my mm. she was my senior and then mm. she told me oh mom dell uh, how about me do you think there is something for me Oh, so you see, credibility mm. is very important. I don't yeah. have friends, close friends here in the city. And mm. all my close friends also have family members who are selling insurances. Yeah. But when they know me deeper, they realize that I am a dependable person with mm. credibility. So when you're selling insurance and mm. insurance uh, policy it's very mm. important that you are credible especially the people are so allergic when we say that way <laughs> allergic to an insurance because they will think oh there's a scam again so <laughs> as an agent or as an advisor you should mm -hmm. be there even when you even when you will not speak yet the people mm -hmm. would know that you are not a person who will try to scam people so mm -hmm. you should be dependable credible and mind you i'm not selling really hard selling pushing mm -hmm. even if you look at my um, social media sites i'm mm -hmm. not maybe once in a while i post insurance thing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. post but i don't sell or hard sell that much because what i'm trying to establish is my character me mm. as a person that that i'm like this you can depend on me that's mm. how my my client a pool of client expanded 
So, mm. based on the knowledge that this Adele, this agent Adele, is really dependable, she will not oh. offer something that's that's that has no use of the client. So that's how I build my client list. I see. So in that case, instead of selling the product, you are actually uh, you're instead selling your, your yourself right is that <laughs> doesn't sound nice um you are uh selling your credibility your um as a, a as a professional as a financial advisor so mm -hmm. so that when you are uh ready to talk or when you talk to that person they know that if if you're going to recommend something something to them if you're going to give them some financial advice you they know that it's sound advice because you are a credible person exactly so not a really selling product but yes you're right selling myself i'm selling yes. my credibility <laughs> and my profession like it's very yes. important that people would know that you are the person who whom they can depend on mm -hmm. that's right and so I want to ask because you have sales experience and then you are, uh, but you said that it's di different to, to sell um, equipment than to sell insurance and, you know, provide advice. And you're, you're, you also had initially difficulty reaching out to, to people. And now that you've built your own credibility, uh, people are willing to listen to you, but I feel like it's also a different story on how you convince them that this is the that your advice is sound or that they have to listen to advice. And we talked about this before that it's really good to have um, public speaking skills in um, in in the careers that we have right now. So for me personally. Um, public speaking has helped me in, you know, sh starting a podcast, starting a YouTube channel, and then, um, you know, providing uh, general advice with regards to finances or financial uh, literacy. And all those is because of the confidence that I've gotten through um, public speaking. But for, for, for the financial advisor who meets um, clients, uh, one client, one person a day, but why do you think public speaking is important for your message to come across to that particular client? Yeah, it's very important because when we say public speaking, it's not only measured by the words that you're saying. Mm. You know, uh, am I allowed to say our club? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, okay. So before, before I joined uh, this company, the AXA Financial, the AXA company, before mm -hmm. the Toastmasters Club, before joining mm -hmm. Toastmasters Club. But mm -hmm. before that, I was already teaching college and like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I can really say that my speaking ability is not really good. I love to mm -hmm. talk, but I don't have this systematic way of presenting. It's just mm -hmm. uh, always an impromptu speaking. What mm -hmm. I what I felt in my heart and in my mind, I will readily say it right mm -hmm. in front of a yeah. person. So they mm -hmm. saw me as a very transparent, very honest person. But sometimes it's not the case. When you mm -hmm. want to convince people, words, it's not only about words, it's beyond words so here mm. comes the public speaking it's very important mm. in the sense because when in you, you know Gwen you know in our Toastmasters club we were being taught how to say not only words but including mm. our gestures yes. the way the eye contact it's very important because mm. the clients would say oh maybe he's not really honest because mm. he's looking the, the agent is looking at the side floor mm. and ceiling what mm. is she trying to <laughs> say yes. does, does this mm advisor have other agenda aside from selling products so mm. you know public speaking is not only about words how how much of the words you can say how eloquent mm. you are how profound 
is your message, but also your gestures, your mm -hmm. eye contact. And also we were being taught when to stop speaking. You cannot mm -hmm. talk four hours presenting to the client when you know already <laughs> that your client is not <laughs> listening. You yeah. know, we're being time, right, Gwen? Mm -hmm. We have yeah. the five to seven minute speeches. So this yeah. is really important. This has helped me become a better, a better financial advisor because mm -hmm. I realized, oh, time is of essence. If yes. I will talk too much, the client will cannot hear me anymore. There mm -hmm. are words yeah. and there are important messages that will be missed out because mm -hmm. I talk a lot. So before going to the client, I really, what do you call this one? Outline the important mm -hmm. things that I should mention. So mm -hmm. this public speaking skills was really developed. It has been developed by being a Toastmasters club member when mm -hmm. I was part of this club. So it has helped me also. So yeah. it's very important. Yes, and that's why I really <laughs> included this um, topic in our conversation with regards to public speaking because um, there are financial advisors or the, there are people who start with financial advice and they have good intentions, um, they're recommending the right products, they're um, providing sound financial advice, but they're always um, dumbfounded when at the end of their meeting, the client says no, um, and it frustrates them, like they have all the good intentions, um, it was a good presentation, like they think that it was a good presentation because they've conveyed all of the things that they wanted to say, but then the client still says no. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes it's because of the the lack of the public speaking skills. Um, they haven't really developed that yet. And as as you mentioned, eye contact is like very important. I think it's one of the things that we should really practice. And in our club in Toastmasters, we really have that as well. Um, hand gestures and how convincing you sound i think that's one of the most important things mm. as well and that would make a really good presentation because um i think there was like i think we attended one of the toastmaster seminar where um someone said something like if there are two people who say the same things the exact same thing but one said it in such um great public speaking skill with conviction, with the right hand gestures at the right moment, um, you will definitely be more convinced with that person than with another, than with the other person who would just um, plainly say what um, the message was. So it's very different when um, it was, it is, uh, it's, I think it's like this skill that you, a lot of people, not just financial advisors, should be able to um, develop, right? Mm -hmm. It's yes. such an important part of communicating to other people. Yeah, I agree because even hand gestures, when you open your hand, there's a meaning mm -hmm. on that. When you raise your mm -hmm. left hand, when you raise your both hands, these, all these gestures have meaning. So mm -hmm. I think this really contribute to being who you are, how your clients perceive you, like you're talking of a very important thing. In Toastmasters mm -hmm. Club, we were being taught how to pause so mm -hmm. that our client can internalize how important that point is. So mm -hmm. if you kept on talking and talking because you're very eloquent, you're very good in talking and you mm -hmm. don't mind pausing. So sometimes our client would miss the, you would miss the very essential thing that you're trying to uh, imply to the person. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for me, not only in financial, not only in insurance company, anywhere mm -hmm. you go, even in our yeah. family, mm -hmm. uh, communication is very important. We should know when to stop, mm -hmm. when to shut up, when to talk, when mm -hmm. to 
let them feel that they're very important. If I may add, that's mm -hmm. my technique to my client. I really, before going to them, I really, I ready myself to let them feel mm -hmm. that, you know, you are my world now. You will be, you are the most important thing today. So mm -hmm. put yeah. things aside. When you talk to them, focus and then uh, eye contact and then let them feel that they are important. You're there for them. You will mm -hmm. listen. You will provide solution. You will not be getting money from them, but <laughs> you're there for them because they have a problem that they need to solve and you are there to help them. Mm, yes, exactly. So that, I think that's one of the things that financial advisors and actually other people should really work on because um, sometimes some people can come off as being insincere when they're really not because of uh, the way they've handled themselves during a conversation or a meeting. Mm. So, yes. And how are you? So until now, you know, we're still learning, right? We're still in the same club and we're still <laughs> learning every meeting. There's still so much more to learn. And with that, and I know that I, I think we talked about this um, a while back before before the pandemic that you are one of the reasons why you came on to uh, or you joined the Toastmasters is because you're a person who wants to learn. Yes. So, and until now you're learning and, and evolving as well. So in terms of like, and you mentioned as well that one of the things that you love with your group is that you have, um, you huddle together um, every Monday to do um, product training, to learn more from one another. and. I just so you are you still doing that with your team? Yes, every Monday. Yeah, mm. yeah, not not with the not not with the branch as a group, not as a branch, mm. but we're doing oh, that okay. as a unit because we have the social distancing, so <laughs> we limit the people, so we do it per unit. But before that, as because my group found out that I'm part of the Toastmasters International Club so yeah. they allow me to speak and believe uh, and would you believe that this when I realized oh not until when I reached 40 years old I was <laughs> able to host a wedding because before and, oh. you know my my personality is really vibrant and all I can yes. I can be when there's a reunion I can do this but not mm -hmm. really in, and then one of my uh, AXA friend told me, please, can you be uh, like this and that? Because we want a more uh, vibrant and very happy environment. So if they invited me or mm -hmm. if they tried to convince me to be the wedding host without Toastmasters, intern Toastmasters Club experience, believe me, I would say no. Because before, <laughs> before Toastmasters Club, every time people would invite me to talk, even I love to talk, I would say, no, no, I don't like to be on stage. I don't like mm. to talk. I don't like to be a part of that. We will just talk one, one, one on one. So, yeah, so how, yeah I, and that's one of the things that I wanted to point out as well. So thank you for mentioning that. So not only is public speaking or, you know, honing your public speaking skills, enabling you to make better connections with your uh, with your colleagues, you are also, um, you now have the confidence to actually do the things that you don't normally do before. Correct. Like hosting a yeah, wedding yeah. or um, hosting your, your events, some of your company events, and it has really helped you foster relationships. So that's one of the things that I'm, I'm really excited about public speaking as well. It can really help um, people um uh, connect with one another better and also it's a it's a it's a good way to meet people right um if you have the confidence to uh talk to them because you feel like you have good skills in public speaking yes yes we yeah you, i agree because before i'm the i'm the same person but now i realize mm -hmm. with those masters experience i realize that when you talk 
when you talk and you when you commit mistakes that's mm-hmm. not really important the important thing mm-hmm. is you are on the road to bettering yourself because mm-hmm. before that is why i don't want to talk because i don't want people to notice my lapses my mistakes mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. with yeah. those masters not only public speaking but they're teaching us how to be humble because mm-hmm. not until when i'm with those masters that i realize humility is very important when you commit yeah. mistakes that's not really an issue because mm-hmm. as long that you're alive, you can commit mistakes. But what's important is continue learning and be the better version of yourself. Don't stop. Just keep mm-hmm. on learning. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And one of those things, like um, when you commit mistakes, and I know this this as a <laughs> because it happened to me personally as well. Like when I'm in front of a client trying to present something something to them and then I commit a mistake like I get flustered and I lose confidence and I'm not able to um, provide them with like the best presentation. And that was because like, it it wasn't even that I wasn't prepared. It was just that um, I got really embarrassed that I committed a mistake, but you're right. Um, With practice, as long as you practice and you don't give up easily, you can still like bounce back and then just think about what you can do forward in in the in the future and how to um, become better at that particular um, in how you speak and how you present yourself right yes I agree all right so um, that was a very interesting topic Adele and we've actually covered a lot we've covered your <laughs> your your backstory and we've covered as well um, the things that you're that has kept you and has um, given you inspiration to continue what you do and we've also covered um, public speaking and how important it is to um, in our careers in the financial industry now um, and I don't want to keep you long. This is actually <laughs> getting to our the end of our podcast. But I guess my final question to you is like, what is your, um, what are your plans now? Now that you are three years in the industry, what is your next milestone? What was the next goal for you? Well, uh, that's the one of the beautiful thing in this industry because the longer Mm -hmm. I stay, the longer Mm -hmm. I realize that I should be the better version of myself so that Mm -hmm. I can give the people, I can give to the people the best there is in me because you cannot give Mm -hmm. what you don't have. So I, my plan Mm -hmm. is really to equip myself founded with the right techniques and the foundation, what's really in this company, what's really the treasure that I am holding, what is really in my hand that is, that will be about to be offered to the people around me. So that Mm -hmm. that's really my vision now. I realize Mm -hmm. that, you know, as time goes by, it's not only I'm uh, pushing this product, but I should be giving them the right solution for mm-hmm. their individualized or personalized uh, problem. So mm-hmm. my, my, I think my plan now, not really, I think my plan now is really to, to push harder even in pandemic i will not stop i will continue mm-hmm. to reach out to more people and mm-hmm. not only be, be, because gwen before i real I, I i said okay i will be meeting pe- how many people in a week like that and then i will put that mm-hmm. in my yeah. notes but now yeah. i will be i will be revising my system i said before mm-hmm. going out i should e- be equipped more i should be more ready Going out in the mm-hmm. war is is just like losing the battle when you're not fully geared. So mm, right now, yes. I, I'm going to intend a portion of my time to really study, to to maybe to study more also of the our economic economic uh, 
faces situation. or a yeah. situation yeah. what's really the best solution what's yes. the mm -hmm. solution there is that can mm -hmm. be provided for the people that's been with me for mm -hmm. the three years that i'm with this company yeah definitely continuous um customer service for your current clients because i think some people um some financial advisors once they get a sale or i don't know for other countries but here particularly in cebu i do see those financial advisors <laughs> who after one sale and they yes. don't talk to their clients anymore so it's really good that you mentioned that you always uh, maintain uh, that relationship with your your clients by um, studying and finding out ways on how you can continuously help them because that I think will just get back to your business maybe they later on they will get another another um, uh, if there are changes in their life right yes and they'll go back to you because yes. they trust you because you've been in contact with them and fostering that positive relationship to them so that's really great and i'm happy that you're doing that adele keep up the good work and before we end this podcast how can people uh, reach you if they want to get to know you more or know about the things that you do oh i don't really have like twitter and oh i have but i forgot my but i'm very <laughs> visible in facebook yeah. you can you can add me as friend in my mm -hmm. Facebook account, Adele Nakila Toledo. So I would be more than happy to accept you and mm -hmm. let's can message it. Let's, let's be friends. You know, yeah. life is too short. Let's be happy. Let's help each other. Not only we will be providing each other's needs, but we will help each other through maybe educating other people and reaching mm -hmm. out also for those people who really need our help. Yeah, wonderful. So thank you so much for this wonderful conversation, Del. I've certainly learned a lot from you and hopefully our listeners have too. You have a good one. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>